So yeah, just to really quickly recapture that then, um, as I mentioned, this is uh, the previous two weeks now really are backfilling this uh, upstream part of the concept generation. Um, and so that's where this part three fits in. It's effectively, in terms of this approach, the start of the creative process. Uh, so yeah, we're calling this basic concept layout. Uh, and these quotes here, hopefully you can see that now, um, you know, uh, capture quite nicely the, the dilemma in a way that the designer faces. So you get one chance to, to be in that very, uh, I think febrile is the right word, but very sort of creative part of a project where everything's open for you. Any avenue is potentially uh, discoverable creatively. Um, and that's really what this idea is based upon to make the very most of this early opportunity. Because as you know, as you start defining your concept um, and in production, you start freezing certain elements, you can't make changes. So this is the time to have full exploration mindset. And then when we start defining elements, we can start narrowing and refining the concept further. Um, and the other pertinent uh, quote, I think, is never begin a project with the answers, just the right questions. And that really relates to a mindset of uh, trying not to pre-guess the outcome at this stage. Um, it's really easier said than done that. I'm, I, I'm as guilty as anyone on this, that you, you've got an idea of how it looks, how this concept might look, and that's what you chase. This approach hopefully will give you many different possibilities about how it could look. And they're all based on the foundation of your research as well. So I just think it's worth spending a little bit of time explaining those because uh, you know we are our instinct is to go right in, plunge in and sketch and, and pull out some beautiful sexy surfaces. Uh, and this will yield that eventually, but it's it's a different way of doing it, okay? So hopefully everyone now has the start, the genesis of a basic concept definition. And I think all of you do. You could, if you had to define in one or two lines what your concept is trying to do. So to move beyond this point and to get into that creative process, we're going to start this process of concept ideation. Um, and a very simple and effective way to do this is to break down the concept into simple building blocks. And these blocks are effectively the key functional requirements that we can then start to design around. So we'll get into what those functional requirements are oops, very shortly. <clears throat> okay, so that's an image that you may see uh, recognized from HPoint. <laughs> And um, these are examples, if you like, of using the basic kind of building blocks um, that your research around both scenario and persona um, will be used to generate. Um, we're going to look in detail at what the categories are. Um, so if we pop there, pop that back there, they all of the elements here that we're going to start defining are informed by what you've done and I'll just give you an example so here we have um, something I've shared with you before which is a little bit of detail around the, the idea of this project that looks at camping and taking a family out of a city uh, into the countryside for you know exercise and um, sharing an experience so here we've generated uh, three elements that can be used to inform our design. So if we take a look at that, we've got a typical journey, um, which we can detail and that will give us a scenario, which some of you have already done. And we've also got some, um, uh, let's say, uh, judgments about the driving performance that this vehicle needs to be capable of. It's not a performance car. Um, it might need to work a little bit on rough ground, judging by the scenario that we've created, and it needs to be reasonably kind of compact. So we did talk about this before, but hopefully it, 
we'll start to crystallize what we're doing next. Um, and then some duration around your typical use scenarios would be uh, very helpful. And for each of you, they're going to be very different. And that will bring into focus elements around comfort. Um, and typically, you know, what you're designing into the interior and the exterior of the vehicle. Um, and also, you know, how how long a journey is typical for this uh, vehicle, um, for the concept that you're generating. Is it a GT cruiser capable of covering continents, or is it an urban runabout? Um, obviously, having huge implications for choices around powertrain um, and performance as well. So the efforts that you've put into creating your customer journey and your, your scenarios uh, can now be fed into this start of this creative process. And what we've got here are four broad definitions that we can start to build around. Um, you know, these aren't definitive, um, but they do tend to cover most um, decisions that you need to make at this stage, okay? if you're generating a project as you are. Uh, and these are vehicle layout, uh, what the actual function of the vehicle uh, is focused upon, powertrain choices, and modularity opportunities as well. Now, you might want to tweak those to fit your overall categories of vehicle, uh, categories within your concept, I should say. But broadly, you can kind of drill down into each of these um, and start the process of uh, rough sketching around some of these essential building blocks that you need. So let's take a look at, in a little bit more detail here. If we, if we pick out layout, for instance, what you can do is understand under the banner of layout, we can start to explore vehicle size and therefore uh, the vehicle segment. Um, general kind of seating arrangement. So typically, is this a five-seater? Is it a two-seater? Is it a two plus two, et cetera? We can start to make those definitions now. And also, we can make some assumptions around interior volume. You know, are you using this vehicle as a place to work? Are you using the vehicle as a place to sleep? Or is it just a fast, uh, you know, vehicle which the compromise around interior volume is there for a very specific reason. So you can start to kind of make slightly more uh, defined definitions around all of these categories um, as we start the process of sketching initial design work. Um, let's look at the function of the vehicle as a category as well. Now, obviously, you could say, well, it's it's a it's a hub. It's a place to to grow things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you you need to kind of break it down a little bit further here. So I've got some examples that you could work around. So space utilization, i.e., is the back of the car devoted to carrying around your hobby, mountain bikes, yada yada, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or is um, uh, you know, is the interior um, completely separate from elements that you plug in on top of the vehicle, which are linked to its its particular function that you're trying to design for. And also have a think about interior flexibility. Um, you know, uh, if you think back 20, 30, 40 years ago, what we had in the back of some wagons were fold away, stow away seats. Um, forward-facing, rear-facing, depending on your, your brand of choice. Um, but obviously, we are, we're looking ahead, we're looking to the future, and the opportunities there may be for creating a different function within the interior, um, or without, in fact, that could include exterior, uh, by having things that, elements that are flexible. Um, and also, the performance focus of the vehicle, as I mentioned there, a couple of slides back, uh, you know, if your vehicle is mainly focused around being a, a hub where people come and congregate, then, you know, it, it, the, the focus of the performance and the powertrain um, 
and the stance of the vehicle, et cetera, et cetera, will be defined by that, will be informed by its main function. So let's take an example of this um, just to understand the breadth of thinking that we can generate here. Um, we won't get too kind of bogged down in this, but we'll say that, look, we're looking at function. We're looking at the function of the vehicle. And my concept is talking about relaxation. Let, let's use that idea. So I've done my research. I've got my personas. I've got my customer journey maps. This is sort of my definition of what it is. It's about relaxation. Um, and, you know, relaxation could mean a huge number of possible design elements here it could be anything from a very unitary calming cocoon like space uh, which is shown in this concept um, or it could be something very much focused on relaxing within a hobby in this case meeting people with uh, you know animals and designing a vehicle around that notion as well or it could look at, uh, you know, completely personal relaxation and very kind of culturally specific relaxation, excuse me, if you like. <clears throat> so there are an enormous number of opportunities within this phase of the project um, that you can understand in terms of categorization um, of the ideas around your concept. So those are just three examples that based around exactly the same keyword effectively, but very, very different kind of uh, directions as well. Um, just to run through the rest of these uh, categories here, this one's a little bit um, sort of uh, not exactly outside our remit. Um, in fact, it's very, um, it has some enormous um, what would you describe them as effects if you like on the vehicle that you're going to design or, or the concept you're going to develop what we're talking about here effectively is motor motors in the case of ev typically um fuel and battery um and the reason for that is should be fairly clear i'm sorry those have misaligned but it's again linked to your typical journey and the typical use of the vehicle um now, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in any of these, and I've put a couple of uh, links for you to explore in your own time, which describe the principles and theories behind each of these elements here. Um, suffice to say that, you know, your choice of powertrain uh, will deeply affect the potential layout of your vehicle. And we're starting to see that in production vehicles now, of course, with the platform skateboard elements we've talked about um but uh for instance you know you, if you make a choice that your vehicle needs to be a huge range vehicle then it may be that you have to plump for something like a hydrogen fuel cell uh, and then you have infrastructure questions uh but you know it's a concept so it doesn't really matter in that respect but you do have to consider actually uh, you need a pressurized tank um, and it's a large, heavy thing, and that has huge implications for the basic concept package that you're designing. So again, powertrain is not necessarily our forte, but it's informing the creative process in terms of the building blocks behind your idea. And the last of these kind of categories really refers to modularity, and that should be fairly self-explanatory. Uh, one of the basic ideas there is, is the scalable platform approach of, um, you know, that uh, Andre and um, Canoe, we were talking about with the Canoe, et cetera, et cetera, which I think Canoe sounds like they're having a bit of a bump at the moment, uh, which is a shame. But also, um, you know, modularity around the vehicle. So not just from a, a, a production perspective, but, you know, can I bolt on uh a unit to the side of the vehicle to do something specific, uh, to change its function maybe, or to enhance its function. Um, I'm thinking you know, there's a lot of those sort of uh, camping elements that uh, you know will fit onto the back or the, the top of the vehicle, for instance, um, and effectively you know enhance what it can do. So 
Okay, that's a very sort of broad sweep look at these four categories, um, but they are very helpful in terms of working through them and applying the research from your vehicle and using them to sketch around, okay? Um, so here's another example, um, and it's just trying to explain that with the same um, uh, vehicle concept or idea concept, you can come up with very different solutions. So that's the really important message I want to get across on this little section here. So if we take the idea, we're designing a lunar research vehicle, maybe space tourism. Um, we want to kind of protect this volume here because we've decided to get that it's a shared experience. Let's just say off the top of my head, we want to get four people in there. Uh, you want space for uh, collecting some samples. Um, and so this has been kind of uh, ring fenced. Um, and we'll use that cabin vehicle, uh, that cabin volume to see what we can generate. So we're not worried about the quality of the drawing or anything at this stage. It's simply, you know, playing around with use, utilizing that same volume. So completely different concept, same basic cabin volume that has been protected for the, the same number of people uh, plus function, in this case, collecting samples, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the same again here. We've basically translated that same basic cabin volume, but looking at completely different powertrains. So maybe they have different benefits uh, to explore. Um, and exploring very different layouts of the vehicle. Again, the same concept. The concept hasn't changed. Um, but the stretch, the possible outcomes of this need to be as many as possible at this early, early stage. Um, so how are we going to do this? Well, there's, there's, there's many ways, really. And this, this forms part of another uh, lecture from university around different sources of inspiration. So I'm not going to go into massive detail here, but <clears throat> a couple of things just to say that um, you know, if, if you look for inspiration at this stage in purely uh, the automotive field, let's say, um, then you're effectively going to come out with something that is a derivative, not, not an exact copy, but you're going to end up with something that's broadly uh, the same result as, as what's already out there. Um, you know, that's, that's the principle behind uh, using... Uh, a single source or in this case multiple sources now what I'm talking about here is to try and look beyond automotive for your uh, initial ideas your initial inspirations okay um, you know we've listed a few categories here that can have uh, you know massive opportunities for translation into an automotive design an automotive concept and the benefit here is that you end up with, you know, a hybrid, maybe you can call it a synthesis, but a hybrid or generally an original uh, concept, okay, by looking beyond and absorbing and assimilating ideas from different, different sources. So that's definitely um, something to keep in mind when you look outside of automotive to create some of those initial inspirations uh, example may have shown you this again as well but this is um, for the vehicle whose storyboard I shared with you in, in uh, week two's output uh, and this is a reading vehicle that you can rent and it comes and grabs you collects you takes you anywhere and you can go and sit in a park with this vehicle and have a moment a quiet moment of reflection and this person took the notion of that and said I'm trying to replicate a library because that's what you you know what you do in a library you read a book and it's quiet uh, so therefore I will look at interesting library architecture uh, and I, I'll expand that to other architecture to get some um, you know innovation ideas thought starters around so just an example of you know looking beyond our our automotive transport world, which I think all of you are doing anyway. I, I, I think that's that's pretty clear. But you need to keep that in mind if you want to create an original output. 
another uh, another example here, which is obviously uh, a lot more kind of mainstream in some respects. Uh, and Fiat, I think I can never get the name of it right. Centovento, I think it was the concept from three four years ago now. A uh, great little concept and very focused, as Fiat are a lot of the time, to be fair to them, on looking at um, product inspiration. So they tend to see with the Panda, for instance, a very, which is a sort of subcompact car for guys in the States, uh, you know, uh, it, it's much more of a workhorse linked to your kind of daily life than a, a vehicle of aspiration. And with this idea, they've taken many product ideas this sort of pegboard effectively, which, you know, uh, is very useful uh, in a housing situation. But, you know, why not put it into uh, a family vehicle as well? And they give me some ideas of what could be, um, you know, how they can be used. So just a couple of ideas as a slight tangent there to look beyond automotive uh, architecture and, and product. And what we're looking to do here at this next stage is this. This is the sort of meat of what we're trying to do here, really. Um, so we want to use that kind of format that I showed you in the H-point sketches. That format is typically plan view, so top down, and profile or side profile of the vehicle. Um, and the reason for that is that a vehicle, your concept, is ultimately a three-dimensional product. Um, it's not a rendering. It, the idea is that you should be able to translate this concept, hopefully one day, into 3D. If that's simply in digital 3D, absolutely fine. If it goes further than that, fantastic. Um, but yeah, that's something to keep in your mind, that it's a three-dimensional object, so if you can start the thought process of initial sketching in this kind of a way, we consider that three-dimensionality. Um, and what we're doing here is ignoring any surface detail. So that's when we get into the nitty-gritty, and that's another course on exterior design, I'm sure, which will look at contouring, surface tension, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we are looking at the main building blocks of those categories that I talked about. So the size, the layout, the seating, uh, and powertrain, uh, and any of the other categories listed above up there. And they, you know, they will start um, to, to uh, sorry, then we can start to, to build this in, in, uh, in a sketch format. So what we've got here, and I should add that you don't often see this kind of stuff because when companies launch a vehicle or launch a concept, you know, everybody wants to see the flashy rendering, everybody wants to see the animation, um, and, you know, the upfront upstream work is, is work in progress. It's sketchbook stuff, it's rough, it's ready, it's loose, and that's what we're after. It's getting elements of the basic function of the vehicle down, and creating the start of a package which we can design around. Um, and yeah, here's an example, Renault Trezor, uh, I think this is 2017, big old electric GT, uh, I think it was uh, Lawrence van, de van der Acker at the time doing that, I think. Um, but anyway, early phase sketching from this fantastic guy who I've got a few more sketches from, Stefan Janine, really talented bloke, um, and look, what he's doing here, he's building the occupancy. So we've got one person, it's a single seat here, that's what we're protecting for. We've got storage, even at this early stage, it's a GT car. So that means you're going away for the weekend probably. And here we've got some, uh, uh, you know, uh, fancy luggage that's put in a specific, specifically designed section of the vehicle. You know, that's a feature. Uh, so we're gonna protect for that. We've got an idea that we can uh, design around that. And we know it's gonna be electric. And what we've got here, because it's uh, a low H point, because of the type of vehicle, it's performance vehicle, we're putting, we're, we're, we're doing away with the, uh, the sandwich, the platform, which gives everybody the built up shoe kind of look. And we're putting our battery up front. 
okay and we might have our motors back here by the look of it uh, for weight distribution but you know within that very simple loose sketch that just describes some functions there's no design work there at all there's a rough kind of a shape nothing else and we capture everything we need for that concept we capture what the user is is doing on their journey and we start to build the basics of the layout and we can start designing around that then um sorry if i get animated with this i i, I think his sketches are, are fantastic and there's quite a few that i'm going to quickly share with you now um so completely different vehicle okay so this is obviously a, a compact vehicle this is called uh, this is part of renault's sub brand e-mobility sub brand they just launched this year a tail end of last year called a renault mobilize or maybe it's uh, with a french accent something like mobilize or something but there you go so initial sketches again not often released but um these these are you know really informative so we've got a side view we've got a profile and we've got a plan view okay that's important uh, we can understand the the package requirement for occupancy so this is a sort of one plus one zone uh, we it's obviously an urban focused vehicle by its uh, footprint we could say and its tightness its proportions um, but there's some provision at this early stage because we know that it's say for a 30 kilometer round trip that we're going to have a small battery uh, maybe in wheel motors and we're going to have some space for let's say shopping and supplies because that's what you use a generally use a compact urban vehicle to do so you can already build up some of that story and build the initial parts of that creative concept package as well okay um just go here some more examples from yep you've guessed it uh mr janine this is a different vehicle though completely different this is a larger sort of e-segment uh, vehicle which was looking at the integration of mobility and a living space so you probably remember it but the vehicle exists in the the, the uh, living room if you like of this future beautifully built uh you know home and uh so it's the idea of um the, the the two elements there mobility and residency combining um again these ones here are really interesting and that's sort of what we're after at this stage so a rough layout we've got a low h point we've got two three four people potentially there's some staggered seating possibilities because this vehicle one of its main functions is to act as a living room when it's not moving or even if it is moving if it's fully autonomous so you can already see that that's defining some of what you're designing around effectively it's adding width here excuse me uh, and length as well because we have what looks to be possibly a rotating seat etc etc um so it's this level of work really that is the key to this stage of the process and there's a couple more examples i just want to share very quickly because some of these touch on the kind of ideas that some of you guys are, are having uh this one is the in the easy series this one's called easy pro um and it's really worth looking at the whole easy um uh, project as well there are a number of different strands to it uh, from the Ultimo which is this huge 5.8 meter something um, luxury limo space to these kind of working elements and community faced uh, facing ideas here so we've got here a shop this is a vehicle for small businesses effectively SMEs um, and even at this very early stage we're looking at okay I want people to be able to be around the vehicle to interact with the vehicle uh it needs to be uh you know step upable i also need to uh, if that's a word i also need to transport goods perhaps heavy goods from the floor to what would would be uh, the floor of the vehicle um, and maybe i want to help 
less able people as well have access to what I'm selling. Um, or, you know, I just want this to be a place where people can hang out with the coffee that they've just bought, for instance, and, you know, it becomes a part of the community, et cetera, et cetera. And that, you know, you're doing that because that's one of the key points from your uh, research phase um, that's driving that, okay? So all of this is predicated on you doing the initial work to feed in here and to plug into this, this um, uh, part of the project. I think there's just two more here in case you were seen enough of this chap sketching now. Um, but this very really lovely loose, it's quite technical. It's almost architectural, the style, I think. Uh, but again, this one is much, it's the same concept as, as, as this one. But here we're zooming in and we're looking at some ideas around working space. So this could be your eternal freelancer kind of notion. Um, and we're we're starting to use building blocks and protect volume around which we can design. So, you know, uh, if someone needs to, to move around uh, on, a, on a swivel chair and they need to stand up occasionally because they're living in this space or they're working in this space, that's what you've got to consider. That's what you've got to factor for and how you, how you do part of this process. I think this is the final one here. Um, have a look at his website, by the way. He's done some awesome work. Um, and this is the final one, which is the Easy Go, which is um, a vehicle, community vehicle, if you like, around town. And, uh, you know, shared vehicle, very social layout. Um, we've got some ideas that have been generated from your usage scenario, your storyboards, perhaps, that are being uh, sketched around here. Um, and in this case, we've gone for uh, a, a section as well through body. And uh, I would just add actually that if you can, if you're up for doing this, and you can do any sectional kind of quick ideation, it's very very useful um, for a couple of, of reasons. Really, just to look at overall form as well um, at this stage, which is fine, uh, and volume. But also any kind of modularity or movable elements, features. So we've got what looks like the access ramp idea at this stage. And we've also got what looks like um, perhaps a canopy that opens in certain situations. I'm not, I'm not aware of what they might be. But uh, you can show that very quickly with uh, quick sectional line work as well. Um, so... Uh, for those who are doing hubs and plug-in areas, offices, houses, etc., the same principles stand. So at this stage, we're just looking at volume. We're just looking at, in this case, perhaps number of people, the interaction point between vehicle and uh, um, building, um, whether that's below, side, above, you know, upside down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So really basic building blocks informed by your research and it's not just to sort of the mobility the you know the the boxes on wheels as well this is uh taken from some uh work from infinity and nissan that we did and this was um using a brief which was uh, a gt basically um and we were given dimensions, et cetera, and some initial ideation that was done around possible different layouts. So in each case, uh, you know, we've got two people here. I think there was an option here to add another seat, but two people effectively. Uh, we need to protect for storage because it's a GT car, so you're going to use it for long distances, et cetera. Uh, storage in the back here, storage up front here, uh, powertrain, mid-engine, very different proportions, different characteristics uh, versus front engine here. And But again, there's no design as such at this stage. It's simply covering the different layouts that you're creating, okay? And hopefully, I mean, I, I, I don't know, this could be completely what you do anyway, but it's it gives the process some kind of structure, if you like, to work through so that you don't just end up sketching a cool-looking car that doesn't really relate 
to to the brief to the research that's that's the principle behind it um and to summarize then what we've talked around and here's a nice you probably recognize that that's a, a 4c an alpha omega 4c from their initial sketch work as well um so this work effectively is, is the basis of your initial kind of concept sketch ideation. Uh, and the point of it is, as I've just said, um, it really strongly links the usage scenario to where you end up with your exterior form and your interior form as well. Um, but it's, it's linking those elements together and weaving a very tight narrative between your research and your design outcome, okay? Um, and those are the steps that we have gone through at this stage. So really just to sort of uh, pop back to one of the main pages here. What we need to do is use these criteria here so layout, function, powertrain, and modularity, and list down um, some of the elements that are key to your idea. So you can go through this and look at the kind of sub uh, pull downs as well, and start to make some definitions around what's required on your particular concept. Okay, and from that, if you if you then you know, start this process of doing the plan view and side side view images, um, each of them roughly based around um, protecting the key functional elements of your design. Um, we're going to have a really strong starting point to then get into the more nuanced elements of, you know, surface, proportion, tension, etc. as I've discussed. So um, that's what I would like you to um, focus on for the remainder of um, the time until our one-to-one. So I'll just go to the final page. Yeah, uh, and that kind of breaks down the task, really. Um, and so the first thing, hopefully you're all on board with this anyway, and you've got this effectively, but you know, make a definition of your concept. What is it? Uh, you know, you've probably got an elevator pitch in your mind, perhaps, of what it is at this stage. But, you know, a succinct one or two liner that starts to kind of capture all your thoughts into a concept definition. Uh, and then what you're going to do is look at your customer journey map, uh, which I think all of you pretty much uh, touched on. And uh, maybe some details you want to add or embellish um, to list out some of the tasks and the pain and gain points that you've identified in that journey. Um, and then you're going to go through with those four categories listed above and start to understand the definition of your concept. And from that, you need to generate very loose sketches, as, as I've shown, in plan and profile views initially. Um, they'll really help you know understand what you need effectively. And the key here is to keep a really open mind about you know, the definitions of themes. So we use that idea of relaxation. You know, there's a myriad of possibilities as to what relaxation could be. There's a myriad of opportunities about what community and um, uh, you know, friendship and connectedness could be as well. And that's, that's really what's, what's going to make your idea your concept unique is your understanding and your take on that as well. Um, and yeah, just to finish off, explore as many different layouts as you can. Um, you know, if you have to move the priority of components around to try different solutions, then absolutely do that. Don't be fixed on like, you know, I've got an electric motor here and it's just going there. Don't be afraid to move all of that element uh, those elements around to come up with different solutions, different um, environments for your, for the customers, for the for the um, the users. Okay, um, and at the end of this, you will have hopefully quite a number of 
different opportunities effectively that all are designed around meeting uh, the criteria of your concept. Um, so that is it really. That's that's where we're going to leave it uh, for this session. Um, uh, this is going to be pinned up. Uh, hopefully that was fairly straightforward. It might have been a little bit meandering at times, I'm afraid, but um, I would really recommend looking at the Stefan Janine's website, as I mentioned. Uh, there's some lovely examples of this level of work. And just remember, the key at this stage is to not design the exterior of the vehicle. It's to design from the concept package up, okay? Um, and then, you know, you can work around that and build some beautiful surfaces later on, for sure. But um, this is the first stage in creating this really strong, cohesive concept. Okay. Um, are there any questions or thoughts around that before we so I finish sharing? It, it is beautiful work. I've seen this guy's work before. It's um, it's stunning stuff. Really nicely thought out and detailed. Yeah, beautiful. It's almost architectural, isn't it? The way yeah. it's um, yeah. laid out, really. Yeah, I, I love. I mean. I've spent a lot of time doing engineering, so I love the fact that he draws cross sections into things to explain things, to understand things. To me, it, it's just, it's critical to be able to do that, to design something anyway. So it, it's nice to see one do it, someone do it really, really well. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's also um, very real as well. Like usually when you look at portfolio or like final production things, you never see this. Um, yeah, yeah, this level of thought, work right? sketch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's so empowering. So you're like, oh, okay, that's how I'm going to think it through, and not just yeah. up to the standard of some portfolio. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, it's a to see because normally, I mean, what I'm seeing is the nice renders first, whereas mm -hmm. it's just refreshing yeah. to see the the thinking behind how it's actually going to work. And a few ideas of the practicalities. I mean, I could give you a pound for every time I've been in a car company and they've just jumped on doing lovely, pretty renders. And, yeah. um, you know, as we're getting the thing into production, it gets canned because we don't know how the hell we're going to make it. Yeah. So uh, it's, it, it's great that this thinking, I think almost we need a resurgence of it. <laughs> it's how we actually interview people. We, we can teach yeah. them how to draw, but we can't teach them how to think. If what we, When we interview people, we're looking for their thought process do they have a good thought process and that's what's going on into a lot of the schools over here right now ccs and um lawrence tech they're doing some really good work on the thought process of design yeah. so yeah. it's good to see it's good great and it helps yeah. engineers as well i think because uh, when you're having to deal a lot of the time with engineers there's often a massive uh, contrast in the way that they think whereas actually being able to actually have a discussion with an engineer and explain in engineering terms, actually, this is how we propose to do it, enables them to think outside the box. Yeah. Again, from experience, many engineers are very cost-driven, so if you can come up with a solution yeah. as a designer that saves money, yeah. you're going to have more of a chance of getting it through. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think it's worth remember, remembering as well that, you know, the, the cool sketches and, and renders are part of the process, and that's where the emotion the dynamic element comes in, um, but you can you can quite often see when there's an initial render that's released with a launch of a vehicle, and the vehicle itself looks completely you know different, not anywhere near as good. And you're like, so they've basically taken a, a render and they fit fitted it around a package, and it's a compromise. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And the idea with this kind of approach is that you you get the package bit out of the, out of the way first. And you protect it, and then that gives you freedom to design around it. Um, and it's a very logical process. It doesn't mean it's not creative, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's creative and logical. And, and um, yeah, so I, I, I'm glad you like the images. Certainly, I think they're really strong as well. Those ones. This is visual thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Good way of putting it. And it's, you, know, you can understand it, you know, you can have a conversation around that concept, yeah. you know, in, in depth. At what stage of the project the answers come in? 
the answers. Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to start your project from uh, questioning, but yeah. at some point you should give an answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, yeah, I mean, this is part, let's put it this way, this is, if you imagine the good old funnel analogy, you know, which yeah. you go, you pour water in. Divergent thinking. Yeah, that's right. So we've, and and people lay that on its side and you call it the double diamond, et cetera, et cetera. But we are, um, what we're doing here is we've, we've, we've captured a trend or hopefully a, a prediction or something like that. And we've built a scenario, we've built the personas, We've, we're starting now to define the concept. And at the end of this process, I would expect you to have some solutions which uh, fit better than others. So you're going to have some concept layouts that um, work better or offer more you know, performance space, whatever you, you need in your idea. And, yeah. they, and then that's part of the answer. And then you design around that. Um, um, you know, where you end up with in terms of your surfacing, your lighting, yada, yada, is, is somewhere down the line. Um, mm -hmm. But, it, it, you know, this, this in a way, I can see there's a bit of, for some people, there's probably a bit of frustration because it's a different way of looking at the initial part of the design process. Um, but it, it, if you can follow it, it will yield a lot of opportunities, a lot of possibilities. And that's the thing, really. Rather than just one concept, you come up with many, um, and they all serve their function very well.